If your team wants to ship quickly and be confident that the thing you're building is something your customers find valuable, then feature flags are a must have in your dev toolbox. In this tutorial, we'll look at how we can use feature flags to quickly ship a new idea to just a small number of users, allowing us to gather real data on how people are using it. We'll do it by adding a feature to a React app using DevCycle for feature flags, and we'll build the whole thing in minutes using just a few lines of code. I'm Jason Langsdorf, let's learn something new. There's a constant tension between shipping quickly and making sure we only ship things people want. And that tension can slow us down, undermine our confidence, and lead to some pretty frustrating meetings. So this feature, this feature changes everything. Great, when can we launch? Whoa, you can't just like launch it. Why not? Well, because what if we're wrong? We need to make sure it's perfect. So we shouldn't launch it? Well, no, we need to launch it, it's a good feature. So we should launch it? Just worried that we're gonna launch it and people aren't gonna like it and then they'll think we're bad at our jobs and then I'll get fired it's and I'll be live. unemployed. It's live behind a feature flag, rolled out to 1% of users. We'll know more with real data about adoption in a week. Oh God. Feature flags are a programming pattern where we put functionality inside of a conditional check and only show it to a user if the flag is set to the right value. Used well, feature flags allow us to ship to production with lower risk. By lowering risk, we can ship faster. By shipping faster, we can gather real usage data and feedback. And by gathering real usage data and feedback, we can validate that the thing we're shipping is something that our customers want. By validating the idea, we can be far more confident that we're not wasting our time building or shipping the wrong things. The upshot of this is, Feature flags get us out of hypotheticals and into reality far faster. Companies like DevCycle handle the heavy lifting of managing feature flags for us so that we get to spend our energy building and shipping features. Huge thanks to DevCycle for sponsoring this video. You can go learn more about them and get your own account at devcycle.com. To start, let's clone the start branch of the repo, fork it, install dependencies, and then we'll be off to the races. So we will run GitHub repo clone, learn with Jason feature flag DevCycle, and we're going to be passing it the start branch. Then we're going to move into that project and we're going to run GitHub repo fork and it's going to add a remote. Good, good. Then we're going to NPM install dependencies. And finally, we're going to NPM run dev to get the site started in dev mode. Grab this URL, open up your browser, and you'll be looking at the site. The site has a user system that is powered by Clerk. So we're going to go ahead and sign in or sign up using GitHub. And then you can go to your dashboard and you see that we've got three pages here, the dashboard waffles and this waffle filament. This one is the one that is a new feature that we want to protect using a feature flag. So to do that, we're going to head over to devcycle.com website and we're going to create an account and you can sign up with GitHub. Once you get into your dashboard, create a new project. We're gonna call this the initials for you can waffle that. And uh, that's really all you need to do. So we will create this project. Next, head up to this API keys at the top here. On this page, we can see we've got three environments, development, staging, and production. For development, we need the client SDK key. This is a publishable key. That means that people will be able to find it in the client, but we don't wanna make it like too easy to find. So we're gonna put it into our environment variables. And to do that, we're going to open up the project, open up environment variables, and then we can paste in this beat dev cycle client key, save that and close it. We're all set to go there. To create our feature flag, we're going to go into the features tab and create a new feature. This feature is going to be a release, so we can select that option, and then we can call this whatever we want. I'm going to call it something that resembles my feature, so we'll call it Waffle Fulfillment. And then it's helpful to give this a description so that we know what this means. So we can say something like new feature to uh, improve engagement through gamification. All right, now we wanna test if this actually works, which is why we're using feature flag in the first place. I'm gonna hit create. And on this screen, we can see that the waffle fulfillment is being set up as a Boolean feature flag, the variation on when it's set to true and variation is off when it's set to false. So down here in the development settings, we can see the targeting is set on. By default, it'll show this to all users, but we wanna do a test. So we're gonna roll it out to some of our users using random distribution. The default is 50-50 and that's good enough for this app. If you have a larger app or lots and lots of users, you may wanna roll it out to 5% or even 1% of users so you can get some data from people before you roll it out more widely. Click save to save that change. And now we're ready to add this into our code. So back in our editor, we're going to start by adding a provider which will put the dev cycle information into our React app. So we're gonna open up app.tsx because we're working in React, accessing the feature flag data is made possible by wrapping our app in a provider. So we're gonna import that 
from the dev cycle react SDK. And that's going to give us this with DVC provider. Uh, we're also going to use this is DVC initialized in a moment. We need to pass in our user so we can drop in the user there. Now the big change is right now, this app is returned directly as components. We're gonna wrap this whole thing in a provider called main app with feature flags, which will be another component. And that means that down here, we'll be returning the main app with feature flags as our component. That's why we're not splitting it out into another component. We're running this with DVC provider inside of the main app component because we need access to this user. And this avoids us having to do some kind of weird thing where we're wrapping things multiple times. So uh, this is maybe a little bit funky, but it makes our life a little bit easier. And then we just return this component, which contains all of our routes or a loading section. We want to make sure that we don't show anything until dev cycle is loaded. So we're going to use this use is DVC initialized hook to get a DVC ready. And then we'll just add that alongside this is loaded. So if we're not loaded or dev cycle's not ready, we'll show a loading screen. And otherwise, this stays unchanged. In the provider, we're adding in our SDK and the user, which we're mapping clerk data into the dev cycle data pattern for a user. That gives us the ability to tie the feature flag to the current user, which means they'll have the same experience no matter what device they log in on, as long as they're logged in with the same account. To actually start feature flagging, let's open up the dashboard layout. We'll bring in a new hook called use variable value. This is how we check with dev cycle whether or not a feature flag is set for a given user. We drop this at the top of any component where we want to use it, as long as that component is wrapped in the DVC provider. This hook goes and checks dev cycle for the value of a given feature flag for the currently logged in user. And this is the magic of all of this. So whenever the user logs in, they're going to get a value that matches their particular user, which means that if we're doing random distribution, 50% of our users will have the feature turned on and 50% will have it turned off. Then we wrap any link or component or anything that we want to be feature flagged with this conditional around the feature flag itself. So this means if the show while fulfillment feature flag is set to true, show a link in the nav that will let you open that page. Otherwise, show nothing at all. So back in the browser, we can see that our feature flag is set to false, which means we cannot see that item. So during development, it's actually really nice to be able to toggle that feature flag on and off manually, but you don't wanna do that in a way that would affect all users. So instead, we're gonna add some additional targeting and dev cycle that will let us set just our user to have a specific feature flag value. So back in the dev cycle targeting rules, we're gonna add a new targeting rule. We'll give it a name like developer targeting, and then we're gonna add a definition to say that the user email is and then put your own email in here. So I'll put in the one that I signed up for the site with, hit enter, and then what I'm gonna serve is either variation on or off, and I change this as needed. But because of the specificity of the rules, I need to make sure that I've hit this up arrow so that this one gets evaluated first. So we wanna check if it's me, and otherwise we put all users into these buckets. So let's save, and now when I come back out, I've got the option again, and if I turn it off, it goes away. So now I have the ability to change my own value for the feature flag for easy testing during development. Another nice thing you can do if everyone in the company is using the same domain for email is you can change this to contains and then set just the at yourdomain.com. And that will mean that anybody on your team can have the, the value turned on or off as well, which is very nice when you wanna do an internal rollout and get feedback from the team. So next, we wanna make this banner here that goes to the WAF fulfillment page also be behind a feature flag. Open up the dashboard home component, and then we're gonna follow the same process. We import use variable value. We use that hook to get the value of the WAF fulfillment flag, and then wrap the entire section with the show WAF fulfillment conditional based on the feature flag and back out. And we can see that because it's off for us, that banner is now gone. Now, at this point, technically the feature is feature flag. We can't see it unless we go there. However, if somebody was clever, they could guess that there's something here or their friend could tell them or something like that. So we wanna make sure that this page isn't rendered at all if somebody isn't feature flagged. So to do that, we can head back out to app.tsx and we're gonna bring in that use variable value yet again. We can drop that in right under the DVC ready call, another use variable value. And then in our routes, we wanna wrap this dashboard progress route with our feature flag. 
And now, even if somebody is being clever, they can't get to this page. It, it doesn't exist. It fails the same way that any page would fail. Now we've got this feature flagged. You can toggle the variation on or off so that you can go and see all of these different pieces. We can see that the page loads. We've got the nav option and on the dashboard, we've got the banner. So with about a couple dozen lines of code, we've fully feature flagged this. And even if somebody is being mischievous, they cannot make their way to this page. It is a 404 just like anything else would be. And if we go in and toggle this, we can show that for somebody who has the feature flag set to true, and they'll have access to this new feature so we can gather feedback and see how they like it. Feature flags are one of the best ways to take the risk out of taking ideas into production. You can use them to gather real data and move away from acting on hypotheticals. Thanks again to DevCycle for making this video possible. You can find more about what you can do with DevCycle on their website, and make sure you watch the recommended video to keep on learning. Until next time, bye friends.